Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Culination Media and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 64 and I'm going to begin this episode by giving Crobat the Sharp Beak because now I can afford to remove the Soothe Bell which was uh, just promoting the friendly list to hopefully get Golbat to evolve a little bit sooner. Now that we don't need that, we can give that to him and I'm going to give leftovers to Vibrava. Uh, because he doesn't need an experience share or anything like that. And besides, the experience share is already taken up uh, with Zaprong, our Elekid. Now this guy over here, we can battle him. We'll holler anybody, even kids. So apparently they're like recruiting more people to try to take on uh, Cypher and whatnot. Which is kind of a change from Pokemon Coliseum, if you remember, when they actually were supposedly working together uh, with the whole Shadow Pokemon plan. Now they're feuding. Alright, well anyway, we're going to begin with Laron and Vaporeon, and it's going to be against Girafferig and Smeargle. Both are normal types, Smeargle is a pure normal type, whereas Girafferig also has a interesting part psychic type, that's why Bite uh, is having an advantage over it, it gets rid of it easily. Uh, Girafferig basically just is used for uh, fast psychic attacks, it's a fairly quick Pokemon, likes to use Psybeam, moves like that. Uh, it also occasionally will come out with a stomp, which kind of sucks because it can also make you flinch. Anyway, Elecade grew up to level 25 there, if you saw that. Went for the Iron Tail on Smeargle with Laron, and we missed. And Smeargle is very unpredictable, as you can tell. It went for a uh, Mirror Coat there, and Smeargle has the potential to learn any move in the game. Um, because the only moves that it actually learns is Sketch at her level up, which just allows it to... Uh, copy whatever move was used last uh, so technically it can learn anything um, its stats aren't that great as you can see especially its uh, defensive stats makes it kinda sorta fragile uh, it's not wimpy by any means but uh, it's just more so than anything else just very predictable okay so we have Pelipper on the field here went for the water pulse on Laron which does a crap ton of damage because Laron is part rock type and that uh, doesn't bode well for us. Luckily, we have Elekid on the field because we switched out Vaporeon. Thunder Punch will have four times effectiveness on Pelipper uh, because of his water and flying types. And uh, actually, we were at the same level there, which is kind of bad. Iron Tail missed yet again. And if Machoke goes for the revenge on Laren, he's dead. Nope, goes for it on Zaprong. Still does quite a bit of damage there. Uh, but that saves Laron because Laron has a four times weakness to uh, fighting, so that would have knocked him out no problem, even despite his awesome defensive stats. Okay, so we got a Thunder Punch off, and that's going to ensure that this Iron Tail is going to knock out this Machoke. Goodbye! And we took a little bit of a beating in this battle, but we also got a good amount of experience. Zapron grew up to level 26. He's getting there slowly, well not slowly, but quickly and surely. Now oh, that does it for Hobble. You're tougher than I thought, and they actually give you a decent amount of money there. Although I do have the uh, amulet coin uh, on Laron, so anytime he participates in a battle, he does uh, double the money that I'm going to earn. And he use a couple of these super potions because... I just really haven't been using them, and I'm just stockpiling them, so I might as well use them for something. Heal up Laron and Zaprong there. There's another guy we can battle over here. What? You're raiding Team Snagum's hideout? That takes guts! And without further ado, Genok. That's an interesting name. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But he's going to battle us, and he's going to send out two normal types. Kecleon and Apom, and I guess I was a little bit off the bar there when I said that there wasn't a lot of normal types. Um, I think it was in the last episode. Because so far we've fought a lot of normal types. Smeargle, Girafferi, Kecleon, Apom. I guess uh, a couple of these guys do like normal types. Alright, so we're going to go for a Water Pulse with Vaporeon on Apom. That should knock it out. Apom's just very quick and annoying. Likes to use uh, Fury Swipes, Tail Whip. It might know Tickle, which is really annoying. And Vaporeon goes up to level 33 for defeating Apom. Volbeat is next. Okay, this thing is very annoying because 
It's bulky as crap. Or at least it always just happens to be when I fight it. I can almost never knock it out in one hit. Uh, it doesn't have crazy high defenses, um, but I just never can seem to knock it out. Um, I recommend using fire type moves on it if you can. It is a pure bug type, which actually is pretty unusual, uh, but it doesn't evolve, so it doesn't have a chance to like gain a flying type or anything like that. We we'll use Water Pulse on Kecleon after using Mud Slap very strategically to change Kecleon to a ground type. Water Pulse becomes super effective on it and knocks it out in one hit. Another bug type Pokemon comes out and that's going to be Yanma who is bug and flying type. This thing is crazy fast. Uh, it's one of the faster Pokemon in the game and it has a chance to have the uh, speed boost ability which increases its speed after every turn so it very quickly will become the fastest Pokemon on the field if it has that. Oh and I finally finally knocked this friggin Volbeat out in one hit. Oh that feels so good. He did get off a signal beam though which uh, has 75 power and it is a bug type move. He hit Vaporeon with it and it does have like a 20% chance I think of uh, causing confusion and it did confuse Vaporeon, but that means we can use our yellow flute. I think that's the first time that I've used it. Cures uh, confusion and you can use it as many times as you want. It's pretty much the most amazing thing ever. Vaporeon knocks out Yanma there with an awesome ice beam and uh, that's going to be it for this battle. And Zapron didn't grow another level there, but he has to be close. Hoa! Who says that? Who says hoa after you lose? Back in the old days, just saying the Team Stagum name made even grown men cry. That's what they've all been saying. Well, Zaprong's up to level 27 now. He's getting there. We might get an evolution in this uh, episode if we're lucky here. Have to get moving, though. Oh, there's an item over here. And it's a PP up, which I probably won't be using. I don't use a lot of PP ups. Sheesh, this wall hasn't been repaired for a long time. Can't be helped because we haven't made much money lately. Huh? While I was feeling sorry for myself, an intruder appeared. And a team snag him. Gapley. Ha ha ha. There's a gap in the wall and his name is Gapley. Is going to battle us. And he starts off with two bug type Pokemon. The bug and flying type Beautifly and the Bug and Poison type Ariados. We're going to start out with Zaprong and Ninetales. So, let's see what we can do here. We obviously have some type advantages. We'll go for a Thunder Punch on Beautifly and we'll use Heat Wave to see what we can knock out because they're both weak to fire here. And knocks out Ariados in one hit. And if it hits Beautifly, it should knock it out in one hit as well. Yep, both Pokemon down. It didn't even get a chance to do anything. Love that. And Zapron grows up to level 28 without even getting a move off. Can't complain there. Alright, so he's going to send out Sneasel as a replacement. The Dark and Ice type, this thing is fast as well. And it does have above average attack stat. Um, and Delibird just sucks. Delibird, there's nothing good about Delibird. It's ice and flying type, uh, but it's just freaking bad. It goes down in one hit to Zaprong's Thunder Punch. Uh, really, the only thing it's good for is present, and that's not even a good move, so I'm not even going to go into that. You're not even worth my time. Zatu comes out as a replacement. Zatu is, however, a good Pokemon. It is a uh, Psychic and Flying type. It is the evolution of Natu. Sneasel goes down easily to that super effective Heat Wave there. And it's going to do about half damage on Zatu. But yeah, Zatu has really good uh, speed and special attack as well. And I actually like using Zatu. I just happen to not use him uh, in this playthrough. He's going to go for the Nightshade, which is very uh, similar to Seismic Toss in that it will inflict however much damage equal to whatever your level is. So what level was it? 27. So it inflicted 27 damage on Elekid. Can't get a critical hit or anything like that. Down it goes to a Thunder Punch, and Zapron grows up to level 29. One more level. Alright, and that's going to do it for Gapley. I love that they named him Gapley. That's so funny. So, so funny. Nintendo has a sense of humor. Okay, let's see. We'll use a Super Potion 
on Zaprong to get him back up to full health. It's a little bit of a waste because he only needed like 27 HP, but that's all right. I'm with Team Snagum, but I don't have a snag machine, so I've never caught a Pokemon. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care about your feelings. None of that. Let's just battle. Fudlow? Foodlow? Fudlow. Whatever. Graveler and Rhyhorn are his starting Pokemon. Both are rock and ground types, uh, which is a really, really bad type combination in, um, because of the quad weakness to both water and grass. It's all, they're also weak to uh, steel, ice, fighting. Yeah, all that stuff. All right, we're going to use a flamethrower on Rhyhorn. And that just goes to show how awful Rhyhorn's special defense is because it goes down uh, to a not very effective flamethrower. Sadness. Stantler is next. It's a pure normal type, and it will immediately lower both of your uh, Pokemon's attack stats uh, because of its intimidate ability. We get a critical hit on uh, Graveler with the Ice Punch there. Super effective. I don't think it was going to knock him out in one hit, but it did because of the crit. And Zapron grows up to level 30. See how quickly he grows levels? It's awesome. We won't get to use him nearly as much, though, because of that. Otherwise, he'll just get crazy over-leveled. Okay, well, Mistrevis is next. The pure ghost type. Uh, stay away from using ground type moves on it because it does have the levitate ability. I forgot about that a couple of times and have used ground moves on it quite often. It's kind of sad. Stantler goes down to a flamethrower. And I think he has one more, yeah. Tropius it is, the grass and flying type, which I think is a pretty cool typing, but as it turns out, uh, it creates a quad weakness to the ice type, so that kind of sucks. Thunder Punch somehow paralyzes Tropius, so we're just having a good time here. I don't know how Mistrevis knows Aerial Ace, or why. I guess just for uh, type diversity, I don't know. We're going to use Flamethrower with Ninetales. Hopefully this knocks out Mistrevis. It does have a fairly decent special defense. Ah, it doesn't kill him in one hit. Oh well. We're going to get an Ice Punch off. And uh, that will finish off Mistrevis. And Zaprong's probably going to grow up to level 31 before this battle's over. Tropius goes for the Stomp, which really is mostly effective uh, when it can move first. But because it's paralyzed, it's moving pretty slowly. Although... Tropius doesn't have a lot of speed to begin with. We're just going to use a will o -Wisp, wisp just to waste the turn because I want Zapron to get the kill here. Why not? Ice Punch, four times super effective, and Tropius goes down. And Zapron is going to grow up to level 31. Fabulous. His stats are actually starting to look somewhat decent, and they should look even better in a minute after he evolves after this battle. Losing a battle hurts, it cuts me to the bone. That's what you get, Fudlow. All right. Well, let's watch our beautiful Zaprong evolve into Electabuzz. And there you have it, folks. All right, our Elecate has evolved into Electabuzz. And of course, remember that in the third generation, Electabuzz cannot evolve, so that is his final evolution here. Uh, and Electabuzz is just amazing. We can take away the experience share because he's pretty much caught up. And look at those stats. 70 special attack, 63 speed, pretty uh, even special defense. His lowest stat is the 52 defense stat, but he also has... Uh, fairly decent attack power to go along with it so cross shop can actually do some damage and we'll probably be get, getting rid of at least one or two of the punch moves even though it offers a lot of diversity but uh we need some pokemon that know different moves because i already have ice and fire types i'm going to give him the magnet there to increase the power of his electric type moves but that's going to be the end of this episode guys in the next episode, we're going to finish off the Snagum hideout and get our Snag Machine back. Stay tuned for episode number 65. Game on.